Hello everybody. Just getting set up here. Okay, we in a good spot? Yeah, we got everything? I think so. <clears throat> Welcome everybody to the Ogre Zombie Paint Night Kit Stream. The stream is sponsored by Just Games Rochester. We are painting an extra large mini today. This is the mini that we'll be painting. <clears throat> the purpose of this stream is to have you paint along with me if you did pick up a mini at your local game store. Um, or we can take something away from this and determine that, hey, this isn't as, as hard as it looks. You can go pick one up yourself and paint at a later time. So the Ogre Zombie is, I believe, the second <clears throat> large mini that was part of a Paint Night series from WizKids. The, the first one being the Manticore, <clears throat> which uh, Just Games also had painted on stream. But they told they they charged me with painting the ogre zombie, and I'm hoping to do just that for you guys today. So before we get started, I'm just going to go ahead and tweet out the stream and share it in a couple places, and then we'll go. Ogre zombie paint night, more like a paint matinee. 2 o'clock here on a Sunday. Happy Day of the Dead, everybody. Very fitting for painting our ogre zombie. Right. Oh, one other place. <clears throat> All right, let's go ahead and get started. So, if you guys are watching the VOD, this will be available as a, as, as a video on demand on my channel on Twitch for, I believe, 30 days. And then I will also be taking this entire VOD and putting it on my YouTube channel, which is youtube.com slash Rook's Table. So if you are watching this months and months after, don't worry, it's still on the YouTube channel. You are all set there. <clears throat> so let's go over our materials today. <clears throat> we have everything that came in the kit all right this is the kit that we got right it all came in this box box was around 20 25 bucks and it, it's a lot for 25 bucks like i'm i'm not kidding like the mini alone is, is probably worth 10 12 and then they give you like 12 different paints the pots aren't as big as whoop, hello the pots aren't as big as what you would what you'd normally get individually but i mean a normal size pot's like six dollars. If you're looking at Citadel, Vallejo, etc. These are all from Vallejo, very reputable, reputable um, paint maker. And we're dealing with twelve paints here. Doom Shovel Five Five Five. Thanks for the follow, ma'am. <clears throat> Additionally, we have two brushes that came in this kit. <clears throat> so if you look very closely, it's it's kind of hard, but we see we have a kind of a, a thicker one and then a more detailed one. So the fact that they give you two brushes is fantastic. Um, <clears throat> and then it advertises that you can use the blister as the palette. So I want to paint this for you guys like I am new to painting and I don't have all the fancy gizmos. So I'm going to be using the blister as a palette today, which uh, normally I would use. I do have the Army Painter wet palette um, and, of course, all my brushes there that I typically use. But I will be using the blister as the palette just to show you guys kind of how you would use this. If all you did was buy this box, you just want to paint the mini. You don't want to buy a bunch of other stuff. This is a Nolzor's Marvelous Miniature, so it's already primed, paint ready out of the box. You don't have to worry about priming, cutting anything from sprues, putting it together, gluing, any of that. This is just a great, great contained set for you guys. Additionally, it came with this cute little pot that I have filled with water. Um, and I'll be using this to kind of dip my brush in before I get into the paint, because you do want to do a little thinning of the paint. 
some paints come out tacky and when you're dealing with a miniature you you don't want to glob on too much paint as you don't want to um you don't want to miss any details and cover up any details so they do have the paint pot there or the, the water pot there to kind of thin your paints and then of course i have the water cup to wash the brushes so let's go ahead and get started so there i've, I've there are definitely a few ways to paint this thing <clears throat> and <clears throat> mostly i'm talking about the body because it's a it's a zombie so you could go you could go a silver or grayish ghoulish zombie or you could go kind of like a like an off-white you could even go like a sickly green so there's a few here as you see here from vallejo is that going to reflect oh, i think that's readable maybe not um there's an off-white there's a bone white dead flesh just like a sickly green that's interesting there's a tan heavy skin tone we have some browns, a sienna kind of red, and gunmetal. I think that's going to work well for the mace. And then there's also a few washes here, which have been fantastic. So they're already hitting you with the washes. Uh, black wash, sepia wash, and flesh wash. So they give you a lot of options. It doesn't, it's not necessarily a, all right, step by step. You, and then at the end of this entirely step by step tutorial, you will have used every paint. That's not true. It's giving you a lot of options on how you, to paint your mini. So... The option that I think that I've chose and that I want to do is I want to give him kind of like an off-white uh, body. And then, of course, we also have a violet ink here, which we'll go back and you can see there's obviously kind of some of the organs that are they're kind of spilling out there. So we'll use that. All right. Let's make sure these are ready to go. And let's grab a drink. I want this to be as interactive as possible, guys. So as I go talk in the chat let me know uh if you're paying along with me let me know that's fantastic if you're here just to watch well then i appreciate you guys uh let's get started <clears throat> so body <clears throat> i am looking at let's open our bone white here oh come on and we're not going to splash it everywhere no we got it open all right okay <clears throat> so like i said you don't really want to paint right out of the pot because there's a tendency to be tacky you don't want to miss any detail on the mini <clears throat> so let's just get some bone white and i'm just gonna i'm just gonna put some right here all right let's go on. Get some right here so you can see some of the tackiness if you can see that a little bit of a little bit of glob there but just get a lot and this is the body so I'll, I'll take a lot of the pot and even though i'm taking a lot out of the pot look there's just so much left like the, these things will last you a long time if you're trying to paint anything else too so i mean it's just such a great value fantastic <clears throat> all right so we have a significant amount of the bone white in there um <clears throat> but i let's see what this looks like on the mini just to start all right just right across and it's yeah it's like a it's like a tannish all right so <clears throat> i think that what i want to do is I, I, I don't want it to be one color we want to kind of blend a couple colors here <clears throat> let's start by just kind of putting this on the model and ooh, let's uh let's clean this actually because we want to thin it just a little bit okay Put into the water there just kind of thin this down a little bit right and let's just put this all over the just base coating where the body parts are and as you can see water thins that down very nicely so it's not obscuring kind of the the lines in the back okay now this is this is an acrylic paint, so it will dry rather quickly. So what we want to do before that is I'm going to open the gun metal. And I want this to be very subtle, but I don't want an all bone white body. So let's grab, I'm just going to grab some. Ooh, this looks like it's actually a little metallic. So maybe we don't want that. Let's just see what that looks like. I'm just going to put this right here on this side. Hey mom, thanks for following. <laughs> And let's uh, let's just kind of put this in with it, right? So now we're seeing a little bit of a, of a blend, <clears throat> okay? And now you can kind of see. 
Hopefully that's visible, but you can kind of see how, how the gray is blending with the tan and that off-white. And it's not as metallic as I had anticipated, so it looks like we're going to be okay. But that just kind of, kind of gives you a couple colors there. All right, so now we're looking at, so it's a mostly bone white, or like a, the bone tan. But then you can see, zoom in a little better if I put my hand behind it. But you can see kind of the gray is playing in there too. Okay. So I want to look at, I'm, I want to go for this across the whole thing. So let's grab a little more of this and now let's really start coating the model. And another thing about this particular mini, and I said this in, in the terrain stream where I painted terrain, is that it's a zombie ogre. So it's not uh, it's not a brand new space marine in its in its brand new armor, um, which makes it from a painting standpoint much more forgiving, <clears throat> because the thing could be dirty. It's clear it's obviously dead. There's all sorts of things could have happened to this thing. It's a monster. So you don't have to be 100% accurate with how you paint it, especially the body. Even the wraps it's wearing and all of that, which is why I think that it's a perfect kind of start. It's a great starter mini. Really, the monsters are, are great starters. We're just giving this guy, giving him some of this off-white. And we might have to go back and do another coat here. But you can see it's pretty simple, just coating. Just completely coating here. And I want to get the face and the... I'll later paint the necklace and the uh, the hair, like kind of the beard, or like the little mutton chops he's got there. I'll paint that a different color. But for now, what we want to avoid, and the reason behind the base coating is because we want to avoid um, trying to paint it in pieces and potentially missing spots where it becomes very hard to get back in with that specific color and you're leaving you're leaving gray spots which actually ironically with the with the ogre zombie is not the end of the world because we do want an essence of gray in here so here's the face going through the face And there's just a lot of body. <clears throat> but you know what? Before this completely dries, let's switch to our other brush. <clears throat> and I'm going to grab a little more right out of the pot, put it right here. And, uh, and I'm just going to find a corner here, right here. And I'm going to grab a little bit of both colors. Okay. See? Ooh, yeah. So I got a little glob there, but I can work with it to kind of wet blend, wet blend that body. Maybe get, let's take a little bit off, a little more of this. Yeah, here we go. Now it's smoothing out to be that kind of grayish. See how it's kind of blending right across the back there, which we saw. And just kind of going all around. And, you know, I just, even if the paint feels, it feels like the paint's coming off the brush, I just keep going. And it almost turns into a kind of a, a dry brushing situation. Like you can see how primarily we have that bone white, but look at the look at the detail the gray is bringing in. <clears throat> now, we uh, we went a little hard on this front, so maybe we want to cover that with a little more bone white later. But let's just try and keep spreading this out here. We don't want it to look like the mace, like the straight gun metal. That's what we're avoiding. So you can clearly see that. There is mostly, like the primary color is this bone white. And then we have the gray coming in. And I'm just going to paint kind of over the fur. The fur will be a different color, but that's okay right now. <laughs> hey, Chris. Welcome to the stream. All right. Looking pretty good. Feeling pretty, feeling pretty good about that so far. Now, we'll want to do the hands, 
um, the legs and the feet here kind of this color too. <clears throat> so let me clean this one. Let's go back to this brush that was just this color. And <clears throat> let's just make sure that we're hitting everything, not leaving any spots. Oh, I almost forgot to mention. So you can see that I'm using a Citadel base holder. The only thing that doesn't come in the set. Um, this is considered an extra large mini. So there are, uh, there are specific base holders for extra large minis. <clears throat> so the base that came with this is right here. But if I were to glue this to the base first, it actually wouldn't fit on this. So you can see I'm kind of gripping this by just the, um, <clears throat> the natural just how the ground naturally looks. That was the only way I was able to grip it. And it's really just a preference thing. Like you don't need, you certainly don't need this. I painted so many minis before I finally got a base holder, but that was the biggest one that was like quality of life just shot up when painting. Just really comfortable grip. <clears throat> all right, and we're just gonna kind of get this all over the legs. Don't wanna leave any spots. No spots left. And we'll grab these feet. And guys, the music you're listening to is uh, No Copyright Sounds. It's like the top 20. It's my go-to. Go-to to listen when I'm streaming. You guys can find them. Just search No Copyright Sounds. This, is, this one's particularly a banger. This is a great one. All right, how are we looking here? <clears throat> let's grab the hands. Ooh, actually, you know what? Before we do that, let's get into our gray <clears throat> and let's try and let's try and just blend a little gray <clears throat> in here. Very subtle. Like I said really looking for the off-white as a, as a primary <clears throat> and then later you know with the guts and stuff we can we can go back and we can do whatever we want but really nice off-white slash kind of gray <clears throat> sprinkled in and what we can do with the body later is uh, I don't want to get ahead of myself but we can go back and add a black wash <clears throat> because that is going to be it, it's a real hit or miss to do a black wash on, on a light kind of uh, <clears throat> skin tone like this because it will definitely find what a wash does i can show in greater detail for those who aren't familiar it, it's very viscous and more liquid than a paint and what it does is it kind of slides all over the, the mini and it finds the little cracks and the crevices and the muscles and and that's what gives it its detail a lot of people call it skill in a pot and i couldn't agree more um so we can always do that also we'll see how that looks but really happy with this uh this kind of off-white color so far <clears throat> as i mentioned you can do Really, you can do any color. I mean, I'm looking at kind of, well, where were the other ones? <clears throat> Off-white, uh, the dead flesh, tan, you can do so many colors. So if you're painting along with me at home, uh, do not feel pressured to copy me. <clears throat> do whatever you'd like. And just finishing up the hands here. And I hope that, uh, hope the camera angle is good for you guys. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to improve my painting on camera. Sometimes when you get really into detail, I have to come way over here. But uh, luckily this is a huge boy. So we are, we are not getting really into the nitty gritty detail yet. Maybe when we kind of go back and do some of the guts, we'll get there, but... Now it's working, and hey, this plastic blister is working too. Although one thing I will say is I know I'm kind of working with a little bit of a, eh, not necessarily a time limit with um, with the paints because <clears throat> with the wet palette, the wet palette is is wet underneath, so it keeps the paints wet for. I mean, it really could be days if you close it up, but with a just a plastic blister or any sort of plastic palette that you use, because we're using so little paint, you didn't just dump a bunch of paint on the you know on the on a palette uh, it has a tendency to dry pretty quickly just like it does on the mini so just keep that in mind 
always want to dip maybe back into the water and kind of re kind of thin it and wet it probably a good idea for me to do here but let's just make sure we got these hands and I'm gonna spill over into the wraps just to make sure that you know when it comes time to paint the wraps I'm not accidentally leaving any gaps and ho oh, ho okay this is uh this always gets me all right but it's very important you got to figure out how to get under the leg there is like one spot on this leg underneath where it's still primed and I think I found it right there you got to find your your plan of attack <clears throat> underneath because you don't want to bring this to your D&D &D session and then your friend's like uh but did you get yeah that's true no just kidding <laughs> but still just like to be thorough and we'll use kind of what we have left to kind of brush back over the back and just kind of just brush back over the back and now <clears throat> dip into a little bit of the of the uh the gray and let's see if we can't dirty these hands a little bit all right kind of spread that grayish zombie-ish all over Ooh, hello now a lot of it came off right there let's see if we can't there we go no need to panic just blend it just grab the paint that's already on there and we take it with us oh, those knuckles were a little gray though let's just do a little more bone white over over them yeah and got a little bit extra seeing where else there can be a little more gray maybe on the face a little bit you yeah. know All right, and that completes our kind of base coat of the body. So, as you can see, here's what we're dealing with. Come here, light. I'll put you right there, and you can kind of see yeah, a little bit of very subtle off white, off white with some gray in there. All right, let's move forward. Now there's only there's only three of these. Let's go over here and we can we can use this side too. Uh, all right, which one's my bigger one? This one. The one I just washed. <clears throat> like I said, not too many details. I love that they give you a detail brush, but if anything, I'm probably just going to use it to swap colors if I if I have one that's that's hot that I want to keep <clears throat> keep up. And let's see what we want to do <clears throat> with the wraps. Okay taking a quick drink all right here's what I'm thinking guys we're gonna use two different browns here <clears throat> um, okay I'm thinking that for the fur these wraps on his hands <clears throat> and then the fur here is all gonna be one color <clears throat> like a darker brown and then I'm thinking the belt, the feet wraps, and the necklace. He's wearing a little necklace. Like a, and that can be a lighter brown. So let's look at what the browns we have. <clears throat> well, if you really look, we have heavy skin tone. That might work as our lighter brown. Then we have leather brown, which actually looks a little light as well. And then we have heavy sienna, which is almost a red. Hmm. And I'm just... Uh, Let's so okay, trial and error. Let's open the leather brown by Vallejo. All of them by Vallejo. And I'm gonna do this off screen so you can't see me struggle opening the pot. Come on, there we go. Oh, okay. Oh wow. That is that's like a little gold. What's that look like? We put that. You just grab a little bit of that. Yeah, this one's actually thin, pretty thin already. I didn't see that giving me any trouble. But that's, we're looking at like a gold. That one might be... <clears throat> wow, that 
that one might be the the wraps or the the boot wraps let's just see this looks pretty thin let's just see what it looks like on this belt that is light that is very light yeah <clears throat> i think that that's going to be our uh <clears throat> secondary lighter brown so let's not do that yet i want to do the, the wraps first <clears throat> let's open the heavy skin tone Man, these are these colors are all looking pretty similar. Heavy skin tones looking a little thinner, or a little thicker. Let's get into our water, and uh, <clears throat> let's put some over here. Overloaded the brush a little bit. I'm gonna put some right there. <clears throat> and I'm afraid. So just very, just very. Wow. Yeah. It's they're they're both very light. I mean that one's supposed to be a skin tone. <clears throat> so I think that what I want to do with that one is let me let me try and get as much off the brush as I can so that I can clean it. <clears throat> and let me go for this heavy sienna. We're we'll looking at the heavy sienna now. And I think we're gonna try and find a happy balance between the two. This looks darker. In fact, maybe we just want this to be our color. Let's put the heavy sienna right here. Now that's dark brown, hints of red. Okay. <clears throat> Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, okay see the difference don't be afraid to use the model as a, as a little test palette we will find our we'll find our answer so I have the heavy sienna thick on the brush and let's go into the skin tone also and let's just see what this looks like now of course if you're not comfortable with the, the wet blending or even just kind of the mixing colors um, in the palette, I would definitely suggest straight, um, straight heavy sienna here because we want a darker, we definitely want a darker <clears throat> color for the wraps so that we can go back and, and add some highlights later if we wanted to. All right. And now here's where we want to be careful. Want to be careful. Don't clip the legs. If we do, it's okay. We'll go back, but really want to avoid that. So I have a lot. I have a lot on the whole brush. Let's get that off. And now let's dip back. A little mix here. Let's keep going. And I want to. Make sure it's not too thick. Don't want to obscure any of the little ruffles here. In fact, I might go more he heavy sienna here. And this is going to be the color of <clears throat> the fur, the arm wraps, and then the boot fur. All right, while we paint this, I'll, uh, <clears throat> I encourage you guys to ask questions. If you guys are paying along with me, of course, let me know. <clears throat> let me know if I'm going at a good pace for you. <clears throat> if you guys are enjoying what you're seeing, you could also retweet the stream. We're at twitch.tv slash rooks table. And uh, I will mention that, again that this is sponsored by my local game store, Just Games Rochester. So if you enjoy what you're seeing, if this looks like something that you could 
get into. Like I said, it is a complete, uh, it's, it's a complete package, you know. You could buy this kit and then never paint again, and, and that's fine. You'll have all these other paints kind of laying around, but it's a good bang for your buck. You can check that out at JustGamesRochester.com. I believe they still have some in stock. Oh, man, we need to pick up a little more. Not too much, though. And we're getting into the... We're getting to the nitty gritty here at the end where we're just trying to catch the the ends and don't want to get onto the legs. Yeah, right there and there. Oh, caught a leg. That's okay. We can go back. And then, of course, you got to get the underside. Got to get the underside. Let me grab a little heavy skin tone here in addition to the sienna. To just kind of, um, whoop. well, that's going to be that color anyway. We'll go in. We've got to get underneath, but we're looking pretty good here. Let's grab the boot fur. There we go. Notice I haven't switched to the detail brush yet. And of course, I'm not I'm not saying that you don't have to there, especially when you're trying to get between kind of where the fur ends and the leg begins. You know, you build up a lot of practice over time, just kind of being steady. But certainly, switch brushes if you need to. I might do that here in a second. Looks like I got just a little bit on that leg. And now we're playing the game where we got to try and get like in there, you know? Hmm. I don't want to go about this. Well, let's finish what we had here first. Okay. Right, looking good. Okay. I have a habit of leaving a couple things till the end. Like you can see here, right that side, a little gray left. I want to definitely touch that. Or actually, this was, yeah, a little gray left. And. That cleans it right up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah. I end up leaving the the behind the model for last. Because look at that. Look at, all right, here we go. Looking at the front. That's looking pretty good. Right? Just don't look at the back yet. Because we gotta we got to figure out how we're going to get around those legs and, and up in there. So, there we go. And you can see that I kind of leaned more towards the <clears throat> heavy sienna here. Just because it's working for the brown that I was envisioning. And then maybe we go back to a skin tone or even the leather brown <clears throat> to uh, do a little highlighting at the end. For now, this heavy sienna is working. And now I'm just trying to find the angle to get get that uh, get that wrap back there behind the leg. And of course, it's the that fur texture. So 
<clears throat> it's like painting. If you ever painted stucco on like a house, you gotta paint it a few times to get in all those little, all those little spots. And then, of course, you're coming at it with an angle behind. It's already just a little more difficult, but a little patience and you get there. Okay. Okay, and I don't, I don't mind if I spill a little bit onto this wrap because that'll be a different color. And uh, I'm really just interested in making sure that we have no gray left hmm all right we got this one spot right there it's giving me a problem let's see how do i get in there let's try this i don't want to just put too much paint there and then not be able to move it I mean, it is a very hard to see part of the model, so not the end of the world. But here we go. Okay, and now, hey, look at that. You gotta remember, you can see the gray that's the back of the front flap. Very easy to overlook and, and miss. We wanna make sure that, yeah, it just goes right there. Wanna make sure the whole thing's painted. I actually may bring this to my next D&D session <clears throat> because uh, Ogre Zombie is a good, it's like a good level two threat party of five, I'd say. And I know that in this dungeon we're in, the boss is an ogre and we haven't gotten there yet. We've fought some goblins. There were some spiders. I think we just cleared hobgoblins. But this guy, this guy hurts if he hits you. Now you can see I'm kind of getting above the belt there. <clears throat> and similar to the boots, I don't care if I splash the belt because uh, it's much harder to <clears throat> try and cover a spot with the belt color than this color. So we'll just make sure that we're getting enough paint everywhere. And we'll sort it all out. We'll sort it out, out later. All right, looks like the, the fur kind of dips where this gap in his stomach is. So we'll this here and I need a little more paint okay okay and coming down A little more, a little more right here. Here we go. Okay, all right, he's easy does it. Yeah, really good. Uh, <clears throat> see, even when it, when it dries, like, look at the wet versus the dry. So it, I think it dries kind of right to the color I wanted. The red kind of, the red's present, but just slightly. For the most part, it kind of goes away. I don't need too much paint here because now I'm just looking at a couple details like right up here. Just want to catch a little more fur pieces. Um, now that's part of the body. And we'll come down here. I have a tendency to look this thing over six times even while I'm moving on to a different feature. So you know, you always might find something that you just didn't catch. Like right here under this boot. It's, Get that there. All right. And 
little bit on top here. All right. All right. Okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> Let's move away from the fur. I think that we're good with the fur. Let's grab these wraps now. It's pretty straightforward, right? Nothing too difficult right here. And just notice how much paint comes off, you know, before you didn't even dip my brush a second time yet. And I'm almost completely covered. I've almost completely covered this wrap. Just a little more on this one. Now I've got to be careful not to touch the arm here. I'm trying to get the best kind of hold on it. Right here, though, I mean, the Citadel base holder comes comes in super handy here. Just gives me the best kind of grip when I'm coming up here. Especially when I'm trying to keep it relatively in front of the camera for you guys. And careful. Right down here. Don't touch that hand. Just get that brown right there. Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. And then let's... Grab this side. Oh yeah, that's looking good. It's looking good, and you can still see the wraps pretty in pretty much good detail there, right there, and then one more piece, one more piece, right there on top. Okay, all right, that's that wrap. <clears throat> Next one. You can always play around with using all the color I mean <laughs> you have all these colors at your disposal you can use them all certainly I've definitely painted minis where <clears throat> I didn't necessarily know what I wanted to do going in and I used maybe seven or eight colors and <clears throat> sometimes it's fun but other times it, it it's might be best to kind of find your your like three colors that are gonna be consistent throughout the whole mini and then what colors are, if any, are going to be ones that you can just splash in subtly. Okay, and I'm running out of I'm running out of heavy sienna here, <clears throat> and uh, the less it's on the palette, the quicker it's going to dry. So let's clean this brush. Haven't cleaned it in a while, and let's get back into the heavy sienna. Which, gosh, I should just leave these open, huh? All right. <clears throat> Pop that open. Let's get into our water, thin this a little bit. Let's grab just a little bit here. Right in here. Water mixes in a little bit. It's <clears throat> thin. And I really don't need too much more, but it's good to have some more in the pot for touch ups. And we'll just come down here and grab the strap that's hanging. All right, and where, where does this wrap end? Looks like kind of right here.
All right, now we're just gonna make sure that it's completely painted under the arm here. There's a couple spots. Yeah, all right, look at that. Okay, progress. Let's see, we got the off-white, kind of body color, and then we have our wraps painted. <clears throat> so we're making pretty decent progress. Um, anything else I wanna do? <clears throat> Let me clean this brush. And I'm, I'm very happy with, I'm glad I put the rigid leather on the mini first because look at how it dried. So it's not as goldish as I thought it would be. It does kind of fade into that, that nice kind of, uh, did I say rigid leather? This is leather brown. There's, a, there's another paint called rigid leather brown, which is darker, but the leather brown faded into that nice leather that I'm looking for. <clears throat> so something i noticed while i was while i was um painting the wraps i'm just gonna grab my my uh <clears throat> body color here and actually like this elbow is still a little gray looks like i didn't quite get all the way over so i'm just gonna put a little put a little right there and looks like under this arm i want to grab two make sure i got under both arms actually Good opportunity to just double check. Yeah, and then my gray is kind of gray. My gray is still over here on that way on that side. Oh, let me move the. Those colors are over there now. I'm trying to move the palette back a little bit for you. But um, here we go. Right here. yeah that's better that's much better let's just double check almost looks like i think i got under the arm but it might have been kind of hastily so let's just grab a second coat under there just kind of make it look uniform other than that i don't think we need a second i don't think we really need a second coat on the body just because the gray <clears throat> gave it that character it was really missing And I think that is what I wanted to, to grab with the body color. <clears throat> it's going to dip back into the Sienna <clears throat> very quickly just to grab a couple pieces of wrap. Just make sure that that looks nice. Right here under this arm, I want to just flesh out a little bit. There we go, very nice, just pressing the side of the brush against it. Paint comes right off. Don't have to press too hard. Okay. And then might as well double check our wraps on this side. I could, I could double check these wraps all day. At some point you gotta know when to move on, but just like to be, just like to be thorough. Oh, there's one way over here. You guys won't see this, but right under and we're good okay that was the detail brush that i was using right there <clears throat> the fine detail brush from liz kids and this one's just a multi-purpose okay One quick second, guys. <clears throat> what do we want to do next? <clears throat> what do we want to do next? Let's go into the rigid leather. Or, I'm sorry, the leather brown. This leather brown. Let's see. Yeah. Still wet. So what? This is the one that was already pretty thin on us, which is nice. I don't see that too often. Some colors surprise you. Got the leather brown, <clears throat> and let's go to the belt. Now you could 
kind of paint this whole part one color <clears throat> but that it can it definitely takes away from some of the <clears throat> just the care the opportunity to give the model character if you're painting a bunch of these like a batch of them for an, for something maybe you could go about kind of skipping this part <clears throat> but we're here painting just the one and having a good time so let's go across the whole belt with this leather brown a couple places where my my um my heavy sienna splashed the belt but you can see the leather brown kind of just cl comes cleans it right up comes right over very important and it's kind of difficult here when you're dealing with a lighter color like the leather brown you have the opportunity to leave more brush strokes than you would like so <clears throat> try and be consistent with your brush strokes here additionally it's it's very easy and i'm guilty of doing this myself it's very easy to <clears throat> try and go back and and paint put a little more paint on a spot that is already trying to dry and uh, it can have a negative effect because what you might see is you might see <clears throat> the paint that's almost dry get moved around and then it creates these un uh, these unnecessary textures Okay, we got pretty much all the way around the belt and now we're just trying to go for the detail. Don't want any gray sticking out because like if I if I said that this belt was done, if you look very closely, you'll be able to uh be able to, let me see if that zooms in. Well you can see a little bit of an outline of gray there and just it's definitely worth the extra effort to try and cover all that right up. Get really in there. <clears throat> At least these colors aren't too far off, so you know if you if you were to clip the pants or the furs with this color it's not the end of the world it's really not the end of the world so you could easily you know while it's wet you could blend it you could easily just go right back over it with the heavy sienna and it's not going to look weird There we go. I think that's a pretty good start. <clears throat> There's our belt. And that might dry a little darker. <clears throat> same color. Uh, same color. Let's paint the foot wraps. A lot, of, uh, a lot of things I paint have shoes, so this may, this is actually a little easier. You know, you're dealing with the... <clears throat> a lot of minis I paint, you're dealing with like the leather boots, and then... Where do the boots end? Where do the pants begin? Can't be the same color. You gotta try and figure that out. But this is pretty straightforward. You have wraps and then the fur. Blister packet working as the palette. Pretty good. Pretty good so far. <clears throat> Wasn't sure what to expect, but it's working very well. I mean, obviously I have to throw this away when I'm done. <clears throat> you, know, you could, I suppose you could wash this if you really wanted to. 
but if you really were interested in picking up a palette and you didn't want to spend 20 bucks on the wet palette designed for minis um you know michael's has what like a two dollar plastic palette it's like geared towards washing although i will say aside from the citadel holder <clears throat> the wet palette is a game changer it's a freaking game changer like I still use, you know, I'll, I'll use like my primers, for example. I'll still use regular like Home Depot primers, <clears throat> um, even though Citadel makes specific ones for minis. But there are a lot of things that you can use that are not specifically mini, like made for the mini. Brushes, paints, I would stay away from paints. I'd make sure all the paints that you use are like at least four minis. They don't have to be Citadel or Army Painter or Vallejo. But um, <clears throat> yeah, so I'll, you know, I'm still kind of... Even like my snips, you know, they have like little snips for cutting sprues and the glue. Citadel Hell has all that. So I, but I, you know, I still use like some Home Depot stuff. But the wet palette and the base holder, I need it. Because before this base holder, what I was doing is I was, um, there's a video that I did a while ago where I painted the giant spider. And instead of the base holder, I had taped it to like a dowel. Like, okay, let me see if I have it. I like taped it to one of these so you know similar effect but I find that you know especially if you were trying to spend two hours on a mini um, eventually the tape gets sick of uh, holding it let's get some more leather brown on the palette chat if you guys are there feel free to say hi i've gotten very good at talking to myself because i have a nine month old son so you know i can just go forever if you want me to but if you'd like to engage with me well then there's the chat for you oh do not do not go away from me all right clean the brush because we want to dip into the water although this is the paint that's pretty seems pretty thin already let's grab a little more put it in here I, this is this is heresy, but I, I could almost say that we could take this one out of the pot. But I I, I would strongly recommend you don't do that, <clears throat> just because you never know what's lurking in a pot of paint. <clears throat> there was a Citadel paint I was dealing with um, called the <clears throat> it's called Rackarth Flesh. And if you I was looking at uh, one of these um, <clears throat> ooh, one of these uh, Age of Sigmar minis that I did earlier, it's this uh, tan. But man, was that thing tacky coming out. Really got to thin that. All right, a little more leather brown. And we're just finishing up our boot wraps. Or shoe wraps. And don't want to get onto the foot. We, like, we got the foot the color we want, so let's try and avoid the foot. Just come right to the end of the wrap. Right here. Yes. Okay. Got it. All right. Oh, can't forget, like, underneath. So he's kind of, like, stepping up a little bit. So right there. And now the base. Of course, the base. We can paint anything. <clears throat> Probably going to go for... Well, actually, if I'm going to use this in my D&D &D campaign to likely be standing on a dungeon floor so a lot of these you know a lot of these you can paint like a brown <clears throat> like he's lurching through the forest but maybe i'm going to do a, a, like a gray i'm going to lean I'm, I'm shying away from the gunmetal though because a dungeon floor like a stone floor isn't metallic per se <clears throat> but maybe i can do a little off-white gunmetal hmm it might be too light we'll figure that out later i'm gonna do the base last if i do it all right, keeping on the boot wraps. Gotta, gotta stay focused. So, task at hand. Yeah, it's alright if I splash the floor a little bit. That's fine. <clears throat> We're dealing with a lighter color, easier. Very easy to cover up with a darker color if needed.
Okay. Yeah, that's that's looking good. This one's uh this one's firmly planted on the ground, so I don't have to worry about um <clears throat> trying to catch under the boot or anything. Just right here and here. And we are we are getting there, guys. We have our <clears throat> boot wraps and arm wraps. Well so we want this color, the necklace. The necklace. <clears throat> See what that looks like. <clears throat> And what color do I want the string of the necklace? Same color, maybe? Hmm. Really not a lot of paint at all. <clears throat> I'm almost afraid to put too, don't want to put too much on the brush because you just, you, you tap it enough and you, you'll get there, I promise you. Don't, I would hate to glob something, you know? Ah, oh, Ian, welcome to the stream. Thanks, buddy. It's still, uh, it's still kind of hard to consider myself an artist because I just, it just doesn't feel. I don't know. I just, I just like doing this. There are, there are artists out there that, like I said, you give me a canvas and I, uh, I will give you a blank stare. But you give me a mini, and I think we can make something work here. Here we go. Just touch up the belt there, absentmindedly while I was <laughs> okay. And sorry. <laughs> Uh, just touch up the belt there absentmindedly while I was talking, but we got, uh, we got some colors here. We got some good colors here. I'm, I'm, I'm personally pleased with the, with the body color. That was the thing I was most nervous about today. <clears throat> just because it does, I mean, it's, you can certainly make it one color and then wash it, which is fine. <clears throat> and I, I recommend that for, for relatively new painters. <clears throat> but I just, I knew that I could get a little bit of gray in there and I did. Um, so now what do we want to do? Oh, let me go to the detail brush quick and grab some heavy sienna because I actually missed just a little piece here coming into the front because the, the fur kind of dips down, but it's still right there on top of the, right there on top of the belt. Art is anything that isn't immediately related to the need to survive or, okay. All right. I believe you. I mean, I play video games. I guess that's art too, then. It does not keep me alive. It keeps me sane, I suppose. All right. <clears throat> Let's, uh... Wow, I didn't think I would get this far. Now what do we want to do? <clears throat> Let's see. Well, first let me grab a drink. Mmm. Okay, let me just check... What do I want to do here? <clears throat> well, I suppose we can do the mace. Mace makes the most sense, probably, <clears throat> because then we're gonna get we're gonna get weird with our zombie features. So, mace. <clears throat> re honestly, I think I'm gonna do heavy sienna here. It's the brownest, and look at how that dried. You guys see <clears throat> so far our progress. Yeah, we'll do the mace. So the mace is where, this is where the gunmetal shines. Literally, it's in metallic paint. <clears throat> so handle, looking for the heavy sienna, and then we'll, we'll, we'll bring it to life with some of the gunmetal. <clears throat> so let me start by dipping into the heavy sienna. And let's just grab this handle. And now they do give us an off-white here. <clears throat> which gives us the ability to f to make it really shine. We'll, uh... Yeah, okay. Just getting this handle here. Really doesn't take much paint at all. Really does not take much paint at all. This mini's much more fun. 
is one of the more fun minis. I always love painted monsters. <laughs> Just because you can do so much with it. <clears throat> Even like a... I was painting orcs yesterday. I, I always... I'm, I'm derailing. But <clears throat> I was painting orcs yesterday. Just kind of practice and get ready for today. And <clears throat> for those of you that play World of Warcraft, I painted this one last night. <clears throat> and I made him look like Thrall. Look at that one. All right. The cool part about this one is the... Uh, I really enjoyed painting kind of the gold highlights on all the armor. It's a black armor, blue cape, green skinned orc, just like World of Warcraft. <clears throat> but it's a monster. So it, you know, if you, it's much more forgiving. No, I just dipped into the, the uh, leather brown. That's not correct. <clears throat> much more forgiving though. Heavy Sienna, heavy Sienna. I'm gonna be done with the leather brown. So <clears throat> heavy Sienna for the finish of the handle. And you know what? Well, let's just let's just get this whole thing because some of these nooks and crannies should be this brown. And that gunmetal seems pretty strong. Like it's gonna stiff arm any other color out of its way once you put it on, so. Okay, careful. Stay steady, hands. Just get rid of all that gray, and it comes around. <clears throat> and yeah, that's gotta be gray, so that's fine. But right, this handle coming right up to the hand. <sighs> gotta be careful. Don't want to touch that hand. It's pretty obvious if you do. It looks like we're gonna get away with it. And that's, you know, not visible for you guys, unfortunately. But I was catching the back there. <clears throat> that's looking good. That is looking okay. Well, easy. Yeah, that's looking good. All right. Washing the brush. We are still using the multi-purpose. But, of course, if you're painting along with me at home, you can uh, <clears throat> use whichever brush you're comfortable with. Um... First couple of minis I painted, I used two different, like, really fine detailed brushes for the whole thing, except maybe, like, the body in this case. And as you get better, you you find out that you don't need the super small brush every time. You just need confidence and just, you know, just getting steady with it and knowing where to, how to place the brush just comes with practice. Let's get the gunmetal out here. Now we already had a spot here for the gunmetal, so let's use that spot. <clears throat> and this thing is, if you can see in here, look at the shine. Look at that shine. That's going to be a shiny mace. Let's grab some of that. Put that right here. This is going to be straight gunmetal. As you can see, I'm not trying to mix or blend anything. It was really just the body that I was trying to do that. Um, just because it, it just has the, the ability to be so many things. But... You know, WizKids did a great job of giving you so many options that when it came time to do anything else, you really just, you can find one color. So, I'm going to wipe the brush off there. <clears throat> Let's grab the gunmetal. Let's go to the mace. What does this look like just on the mace? Yeah, that's very, in, that's very intimidating. That is a strong color. Like, yeah, very strong. And not too much detail here aside from the spikes. So I'm really just kind of throwing it on this mace. And the mace is, I mean, similar to <clears throat> the model itself. Where did he get this mace? Did he buy it new and polished? I don't think so. I think that it, it, he just found it. I don't know. Where do ogres get, get their maces? <laughs> do they make them? I don't know. He certainly did not buy this <clears throat> at a, a shop in town. So it does not have to be this beautiful polished mace of course we're going to try and make it give it its shine but it does not have to be all right yeah tough part about this though is catching all the all the little spike faces see when you think you got them all there's one sticking out from behind i 
think that I don't want to. Uh, I don't want to jinx it, but I think that I got them all. Yeah, and that's it, it. Gives it. It's it's so strange because if you look here, <clears throat> good value, Mace. Yeah, if you look here, come on. Oh, okay, I have to get better at this. Um, it's hard to see, but it's there's almost an element of black to it. It does kind of give it that dirty aesthetic, which is cool. But it's also shiny. It's not like aluminum foil shiny, <clears throat> which you know I had I had a paint that did that, and I'm actually so glad that this paint night kit gave me this gunmetal because that's quickly going to replace the aluminum foil paint that I have. That's the, uh, I, not saying that it's, it's good in its own right. Of course, that's the turbo dork tin star, which is, you know, turbo dork, very metallic paints. Um, and it was good to blend with stuff, but this gunmetal is much more subtle while still achieving that, still achieving that metallic look. It's almost like, uh, it's very metallic. It's almost a little glittery. I made fun of it uh, like uh, it's the kind of paint that you get at Claire's. <laughs> Just a little sparkly. I mean, it gives it, look at that mace though. It's looking really nice. <clears throat> it actually, the, the, the metallic aesthetic and, the, and kind of the sparkle from this, um, it almost makes me feel like I don't have to paint white highlights on it. Which is insane. Really good stuff. Way to go, Vallejo. Okay, just catching. Yeah, these are little, sorry guys, these are details that I really got to nail here. Just because this is where the handle meets this little nub and yeah. <clears throat> oh, and we got to come down where the, where the handle meets the start of the mace here. And I'm trying, let me see. Back and forth, back and forth, and it'll come. It'll come off the brush, it'll come right onto the model. Oh, and look at that, I did find a spot I missed. Shoot, look at me. <laughs> yeah, that's looking good otherwise. Okay, <clears throat> a couple other things I wanna do with the mace, really just one other, th well, yeah, a couple other things. So I'm learning based on <clears throat> this palette that this paint is certainly drying quickly. <clears throat> Let's see if we can't do this, all right? There are little spikes below the mace that we're gonna try and just touch. Just right there. <laughs> Come on. Right there. there Ooh, don't bleed too much onto the don't bleed onto the handle otherwise it takes what could be a really really nice detail and just and kind of kind of wrecks it a little bit but okay we got it very hard to see but we have hello where am i here we go oh okay right below where the mace is there are the little dots and then i will also paint the the ring below those dots this color also. I painted it brown just because I wanted to base coat it kind of the, the heavy sienna so that I could catch <clears throat> because imagine that imagine I painted the gray first and then I tried to get in there with the heavy sienna. It just doesn't work that way. So one of the things I've learned is that figure out which is gonna what color is the hardest to paint. What's the color that looks like it's kind of way in the background <clears throat> not necessarily in the foreground of your model and then paint base coat the as long as it's not too dark base coat your that your piece that color so then you're not fighting with it to try and get that detail in there all right and just like that we have our second ring there so you can see kind of shiny got the two rings got the handle got the little butt uh the butt of it's gray or the silver and then there's the mace wow that's a really nice mace let's wash that brush Man, I'm ha I gotta tell you guys, I got like six lights on, <laughs> trying to find the right light, and uh, it's getting a little warm in here. 
But I got a window open, so it's okay. <laughs> All right, so we have... Um, man, I uh, <clears throat> I wanted to do the, the fingernails and toenails <clears throat> because they, they the detail is there, the fingernails and the toenails detail, at least on this hand and then, of course, the feet. <clears throat> and I was thinking, well, let's just do it. <clears throat> let's just do it the gunmetal, thinking it was a normal gray. But that might be a little too shiny for for our guy. <clears throat> so let's worry about that later. This is where it gets uh, so okay. Up to this point, <clears throat> we got a pretty good ogre, pretty good ogre zombie. You could be done here. <clears throat> you could wa or you could you could wash this. You could paint a couple uh, fleshy spots here, the sideburns, and and be done. It's not a bad mini right now, <clears throat> but let's let's see how far we can take it. <clears throat> because they didn't give us all these colors to, to end here. I'm looking particularly at this violet violet ink. You know what? Let's use this. Let's use this bubble for the violet ink. I just want to know how dark this is. So we have our multi-purpose brush that's clean, <clears throat> and we're opening our violet ink. And we are not going to get it over all over us. Oh, that is. This is a. Oh, is this a wash? This looks like it's a wash. <clears throat> Let me take the detail brush and just kind of. It's hard to tell. <clears throat> but it's very thin. <clears throat> Dead flesh nails. Yeah. Oh, true. Dead flesh is oh the green yeah that's a great call doom shovel I will do that I was thinking about kind of splashing that in on the body too that'll look really cool especially because the the fingernails and toenails will probably like look like they're falling off which is I mean it makes sense all right so we have the violet ink <clears throat> this is we're hitting wild west territory now guys what's this look like here okay it is a paint it is a paint it's very thin I'm using my detail brush. And this is like exposing his kind of guts here. Wow, that is, it's like a wash and a paint in, in, in one. It's like a contrast paint. And it's, we have some exposed gut here. Beautifully done. The paint does all the work. It's not even me. Look at that, you got a little, little gut ripped open there. That's, that's very purple. <laughs> <clears throat> There's another spot that looks kind of ripped open here, too. I'm coming right out of the pot with this on my detail brush. And we're looking at this area. Right on the shoulder. There's a big chunk. Something took a big chunk out of this guy. And. Yeah. That's. Okay, we have our... Wow, that's very purple. Got our little... Got our, our guts spilling out here. <clears throat> I still have some purple on my brush. So let me... I don't know. Let's just... Let's just line... We got some cracks here. This is a very detailed brush. It actually fits right in some of these cracks and little gut pieces. And we'll just grab here, 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 here. Right? Anywhere where I kind of found a little, uh, little gut piece hanging out. It looks like the back's pretty clean, actually. It's a lot of it's a lot of showing on the front. Wash the brush. So we didn't end up having to put the purple anywhere. All right, let's look at this dead flesh. Let's look at this dead flesh. This is that sick green. It's funny because on the box, <clears throat> on the box, here it kind of shows you what you get. <clears throat> and dead flesh. Look at that. That doesn't look green. That looks like a. I don't know, like a light, like a brown. I was almost wondering if that was going to be the color I was going to use for the wraps, but uh, the uh, the paint itself had a, had a different idea. <clears throat> so I'm I'm glad that we're blessed with with a sickly green color like this. And this is okay. It looks a little thicker. I'm going to keep my detail uh, detail brush here though. <clears throat> and I, I put like a blip of purple on there, but I'm going to put the green in here too. Because the, de the decay parts of the body, I think, should be a little bit of both. Alright, <clears throat> that's enough there. 
I'm just going to wash this brush because I just want to thin it a little bit. Okay, nice and washed. Let's just grab the water a little bit. And do a little mixing. If this gets runny, so be it. You know? We're just looking at that nice kind of... It, it really, there's no right... There's no wrong answers here. There's no wrong answers here. Let's just kind of... Kind of put it all around. Like right where I kind of put the purple. Let's, let's also put this dead flesh. Kind of green. Right? And then like, two might be too. Let's take a little bit of paint off it, <clears throat> and then um, take most of the paint off it actually. Just putting it right here on the on my paper here, and and then just sort of brushing across where this purple was. I don't know. The purple's still a little wet, <clears throat> but I think that we 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 made our point clear with our dead flesh green. Now we just have a little bit of a little bit of zombie detail there. <clears throat> the purple is still crazy strong though. Let's try and see if we can't tone that down a little bit. <clears throat> so because the purple's in ink, having a little bit uh, longer time to, to dry. So <clears throat> another thing that I have that maybe you guys at home don't have, um, I'm gonna cheat just a little bit, but I do have this uh, really cute hair dryer that I'm just gonna use really quick to just make sure we're dry. That's all it really takes. That's all it really takes. <clears throat> um, let's dip into the screen. And I don't want to say that I'm dry brushing, but this might be a little dry brushing situation because I'm taking most of the green off, okay? <clears throat> and then I'm, I don't want to obscure the purple, but I think it's a little too purple. And I just want to, just want to, that dead flesh kind of known too. And then, why not kind of put it, just kind of blend it with <clears throat> with its body color. I don't want something looking too out of the ordinary. And then any excess, I'll just put across the back. Not really anything at all. <clears throat> so that's what we're looking like now. Um, <clears throat> let's do let's do the nails. Let's do the nails. That dead flesh color. Still with the detail brush, getting all detailed here. Toenails are very small. And wow, it's very subtle. Very subtle, but there they are. His little petty, hard to see. It's very subtle, but that green is on, is on the toes. Great call. Do the other foot here. Yeah. And then let's do these fingernails. This is going to be interesting to hold. Yeah. And like, you know, <clears throat> that's not necessarily a detail that you need to do. It's nice to do. So we got the dead flesh on the on the feet. It's kind of it's uh it's there. It might dry a little darker. But we're getting we're getting close to the end, I think. <clears throat> Let's see what else. Let's see what else we want to do. Hmm, all right. We want to do... Let's do something with the face. Let's do something with the face. And <clears throat> detail way over here. Going back into my leather brown. Because I decided that we are going to try and do the necklace. The same color. That's coming down here. Do a 
right into it. And it comes all the way up here. All right. It's a tough one. It's a tough one to, <clears throat> certainly already a tough one to do from an angle. And then I want to make sure you guys can see. And I'm just going to do, uh, I've got to bring this one close to me, guys, just to do up around the neck. A little more, a little more, just up around, a little extra detail there. And then just right around the sideburn. Okay, <clears throat> and we have the necklace done. I'm all out of space here. Okay, this goes here, this goes here. Let's do something with the face. So it looks like he's got, <clears throat> um, <clears throat> we can definitely add the purple to the eyes, maybe a little bit around the mouth. And then we can use <clears throat> the off-white for the teeth. We really try and get into the teeth. And then the hair can be really whatever we want. Let's go back to the purple. Actually, let's do that that last since it's a little lighter. <clears throat> Off white. First time opening the off white. I like an eggshell white. <clears throat> you know what? I'm not even gonna put this in a well because we're gonna use so little of this. With some water. Still using the fine detail brush, guys. Still using the fine detail brush. Grab a little bit of this. I'm just gonna put this one right here. I'm just gonna put this right here on, on top. You know, because we really don't need too much. Thin it a little bit and let's grab it. <clears throat> well, we'll just kind of put take most off the brush and then just get the top there. Let's go to the teeth and let's see if we can't. Very, very carefully. Certainly interesting. <laughs> ah! <laughs> a little bit of white there. <clears throat> get the get some teeth to find. Oh, actually, the way that's drying. Okay, we got teeth, ladies and gentlemen. <clears throat> that's really all it took. <clears throat> so off white. <clears throat> Great example of a paint that Vallejo gave you a whole pot of, for you to use just a little bit. <clears throat> Maybe we'll dot the eyes too. Let's get the violent ink back. Okay. Easy there. It really wants to just come out. Oh, hello. Case in point. It really just wants to come out. <clears throat> Look at that. All right. <clears throat> I don't even need the pot. I just got it all over the... Got it all over here. So we have a clean, fine detail brush. And we're just going to dip into this that was on that's on the table. And even that feels like too much. I, I just... Actually, I, th I actually think their palette would be better with like eight smaller wells. Yeah, these wells are like kind of deep <clears throat> for the amount of paint that you're using. I loved these. I, I, I immediately clung to those. But then I was like, I'm not going to use a really deep well for that. It's just put it around the top. So, I mean, it's, it is plastic. You can really put it anywhere, which is kind of nice. But just a touch, just a touch of the purple and... Ooh, it's just so. Let's like kind of let this run a little bit, you know, and then also maybe just up here. Okay. 
this is where it gets a little dicey because I'm trying to represent more kind of openings of the skin, but it almost looks like he has a little mustache. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> hmm. <clears throat> clean the brush, dry brush, and let's let's try and move it a little bit more. Take a little bit off it, maybe. And like his, yeah, his like mouth's been ripped open, you know? And just taking some out, just taking some off. <clears throat> there, so it's looking like right now. Cut to. <clears throat> Cut to a dry purple. We don't need you anymore. Oh my goodness. This thing's getting all over the place. There we go. <laughs> Shot five feet that way. Look at this. What a troublemaker, this purple. That is some thin paint right there. <clears throat> anyway, <clears throat> gives my uh, gives my table character, which is fine. <clears throat> still, let's come to the dead flesh, which should be nice and thin still. And let's do kind of what we did similarly. Let's just to kind of bring it down a little bit. Bring it. Let's let's bring it back to earth. You know, it's this is crazy purple hanging out there, and the dead flesh comes in just to say, hey, just you know. Why don't you just cool it a little bit? It's almost the same color as the body, but not. It's still got that. It's definitely got that green. So <clears throat> it does a good job bringing kind of real in the purple. In, you know, the purple I think is is very necessary. And while we do that, let's actually go back here and just kind of reel the purple in on the on the flesh patches too. Just slow your roll, Mister. Yeah makes it a little more subtle now it doesn't look like he has a mustache per se but it looks like something happened up there <clears throat> that's what we're looking at right now okay and now what's left what's left guys we got a lot of good kind of dead flesh on the body <clears throat> i think that we uh <clears throat> we might be nearing the end let's get the sideburns and then I think we are okay to start washing. A couple things I'm going to do. Still fine detail. We're in fine detail here. <clears throat> that paint, the white, off-white paint, no doubt already dry? Question mark, maybe? <gasps> there is still some. There's just not a lot at all, but that's okay because we don't need a lot. <clears throat> all right, we're going to attempt eyes. One... Two. We got him. We got him. Good job, team. Okay, we got the eyes. <clears throat> With like the runny sort of purple mascara. <laughs> A little bit of kind of dead eyes there. <clears throat> also something else I'm going to try and do here. Let's get back into the gunmetal. Very fine detail brush still. Necklace. One, two, three. A little more. Just a touch more. Okay. Also very subtle. Maybe hard to see. But the necklace now has... Oh, the necklace now has silver... Oh, come on silver little dots there <clears throat> okay and the sideburns <clears throat> what color is his hair <clears throat> i looked at a, a couple different pictures before i started painting this thing and it looked like the sideburns were going to be towards the the heavy sienna <clears throat> but we kind of used that so let's use tan i don't know Let's see what the tan looks like. I haven't used tan yet. It's really just called tan. You can make belt loops, gunmetal. Ooh, that's a good idea. Yeah, look at that. There are actually uh, little little belt loops there. Let's do that too. Let me start with the sideburns. Tan. Interesting. Uh, fine detail. 
No, we'll go to multi-purpose here. Sideburns are a little bigger. <clears throat> a little bit of water. Grab some tan. I don't know. Put it right here. And thin it a little. Let's see what it looks like. Interesting, interesting. Interesting, certainly interesting. We'll do it, we'll take it. It's tough though, because it looks like it's a little, I want too much paint. Here we go. Define the, the hairs there. Yeah, it kind of gives it that red head. Maybe it was a red head. Get that red, the red look we were looking for. <clears throat> yeah. Look at that. Didn't I just say something 20 minutes ago about how sometimes it's not a good idea to use like 12 colors? Well, hey, I like this. Thank you, Vallejo, for giving us 12 paints. Well, what? Nine paints, three washes. Speaking of washes, I think we're there, guys. I think we're there. Besides the gunmetal on the belt loops, which I'll do. <clears throat> Let me go to fine detail for that. Yeah. Gunmetal. Grab some gunmetal here. Uh, this is actually kind of tacking up a little bit. <clears throat> Let me take that off really quick. Gunmetal's been hanging out for a while and, and just naturally thick paint, <clears throat> thick metallic paint. Let's open it back up. Yeah, you can already, actually, you can kind of already see it kind of crusting around the sides there. <clears throat> so <clears throat> you'll see as you use your colors, what wh which ones can you trust? Which ones are going to kind of try and dry up on you? Let's grab a little more gunmetal and put it in. Sure, why not? And we got the water on the brush, which is naturally kind of thinning it there, running it a little bit. And... Yeah. Grab some. Let's go to the belt loops. shiny and last one yeah good call just a little extra <clears throat> just a little extra flare All right, I think that's enough color. I think that's enough color on our on our mini. <clears throat> Let's wash. So, <clears throat> for those of you who aren't familiar, what is washing? <clears throat> washing is not necessarily a paint. It's a very thin, viscous paint. Most likely, I'll be able to take it right out of the pot. <clears throat> and what it does is it literally washes the model, and it uses the color to fi naturally find crevices and create shadow. You'll just see as I use it here. <clears throat> so I already have this off-white, this bone white kind of gray going on the body. <clears throat> and I think that um, the, based on the washes, I'm using the washes that we have from Vallejo. <clears throat> we have the black wash, sepia wash, and flesh wash. <clears throat> flesh wash sounds like it should be the one, but it's like a, it's definitely a tannish brown. And I, I honestly think that <clears throat> the black wash is going to work here because we have already some natural kind of grayish kind of dead zombie kind of color here in the body. I think the black wash is going to accent, accentuate that on all of the flesh pieces. 
<clears throat> then, for the pants, boots, I might leave the mace alone. <clears throat> but for the pants, boots, we might do like a sepia wash. Let's just see how that looks. So I'm going to open the black wash. And a few ways you can wash your model. <clears throat> um, you can kind of just apply it liberally everywhere, <clears throat> which I've done. I've certainly done. And it's worked. Um, <clears throat> or you can try and take a more strategic approach to it. And what I'm going to try and do is I'm going to try and do the body with the black and then the, all the clothing with the, with the sepia wash. <clears throat> so let's just see what this looks like. Take it right out of the pot. Take it right out of the pot. And let's just see. Okay. You can see, <clears throat> really is going to make this model look a lot dirtier. A lot dirtier. See, look at look at that arm right there, compared to the rest. <clears throat> this is what's going to give it its <clears throat> more of its character. But you certainly you certainly can overdo it, and it, it's a fine line. I don't want to touch the necklace with it, I don't think. <clears throat> but I think that it's going to work here on the rest of the body. It almost, it actually almost gives us that, um, <clears throat> what we were trying to do with the gray. Most nervous about kind of getting the face, because the face, <clears throat> if you put too much shadow in the face, then you lose some features. Let's just paint the whole back of it. It's really going to make this look dirtier. <clears throat> the brown colors would make it look kind of dirty also. But not to the point that this black wash is going to do. This is going to really bring out the nastiness. There was a mini that I... <clears throat> it was a warlock mini that I painted and I was very happy with it and then I did a black wash on it and I had made a mistake it wasn't it just wasn't right for that mini <clears throat> so I've been wary of black washes but I usually when you're dealing with a monster it's not a bad call especially if the body or um, <clears throat> the body's a lot of grays and um, or even like kind of a machine or uh, like a terrain piece Ooh, a little too much, a lot there. Quite a bit there. This is really getting there, though. It's definitely making its mark all over this model. Let's grab the hand here. It's uh, it's a, it's definitely a love hate. You love it or you hate it. I think with the uh, with the ogre zombie works though. <clears throat> I'm just gonna get some of this off on the legs so then I can grab the face. And let's just take it across this face. Really gives it the grime, such grime. <clears throat> this is like the part in <clears throat> The Joy of Painting where Bob Ross says, let's get crazy. And he does something like trying to put in a huge tree right in the foreground. You're like, why Bob, why would you do that? But then everything turns out okay. Hopefully. <laughs> I 
really doesn't take much at all either. I mean, I'm going to have this wash for a long time. And if you feel like you put too much on a piece, the more you kind of brush over it, the more you distribute, the less it looks like, uh, like there's a lot of wash there. But that has very, very much kind of turned the tides on, really just kind of turned the whole look around on the model. So I'll show you. A little closer here when I just want to make sure I grab every piece. So clearly the bone white, I mean the bone white's still the primary color. <clears throat> then we had a little bit of gray blend in, but then we just slathered <clears throat> the the black everywhere. I think if the black was on the whole model, that it wouldn't, it wouldn't, it just it doesn't look right sometimes, blacks and browns, which is why we have those other washes, which will be cool. But <clears throat> here is the model with the wash. Does it look a little more like I'm going to murder you? I'm an ogre zombie, a little dirtier, I'm sitting in a cave for so long. I'm telling you guys, it's skill in a pot. That is the wash. But I think that, I think that this looks pretty good. So similar effect. <clears throat> I think we're done with the black wash and let's do just to kind of, you know, give the pants some character, give the, give the clothing some character. My hands are so purple from the from that purple. Um, but let's do sepia flesh, sepia flesh. Let's do the sepia wash. Hmm, this is gonna be, what's that look like? Take a piece of that. Like I said, also a wash very thin, a little brown, a little light brown. <clears throat> grab some and let's see what this looks like when I this is very subtle very subtle nothing to worry about the blacks really what scares me the most <clears throat> but these brown ones are are not too bad and if you if you don't feel confident with <clears throat> your washes or this is the first time that you even found out what a wash is maybe you just want to put the brown over the whole thing you know like I said, several minis I did when I started using washes. Um, I picked one wash, I stuck with it, I slayed the whole thing with it. Now I'm just trying to be a little more strategic. And let's grab the boots here. You know what's going to make this look, uh, what's going to be interesting with this one is how it looks on the, the foot wraps. It's going to darken them a little bit. Naturally finding some shadow. Just finding those little crevices, giving it its character. Yeah, so just like very hard, very, very subtle, but um, <clears throat> even in this kind of unfocused light, you can kind of see where it's darker on some of those. You can see the wraps defined on the feet. That's the wash. Wash has, has found those spots, nestled in. They are there to stay. Let's grab these wraps too. <clears throat> and I will leave the I'll leave the mace alone. So that's that. Just grow a little bit across the belt here. Too. All right. Washed. <clears throat> I think we're done washing. Let's do a little highlighting and then I think we'll call it a model. <clears throat> Let's go to the fine detail brush. <clears throat> Although it doesn't necessarily matter. Huh. Look at that. I just, uh, let me go into my gunmetal because look at the mace. I missed a spot up here. It's funny how that works. Come on, are you still wet? Yeah. Now I need a little more. We'll close the washes. We're done with the washes. <clears throat> the 
gunmetal back out. Grab a little bit from the water to brush. Just thin, thin, thin. That was it. Now I want to make sure I got them all. Yeah, I did. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> let's do a couple things. So I can show you guys kind of a, a few ways you can take this. <clears throat> we're going to do a little highlight. We're going to do some precision highlighting. And then we're going to do some dry brushing. Let's get a little bit of this off-white and where we had it was is most likely definitely already dry so I really don't need much I just want it right here right here on the palette <clears throat> I grab some just on the top and I come here and I just kind of touch the touch the tops of these the white maybe the lights coming from here so maybe just there or if it's coming right from above then all these can kind of have a little bit of a shine really not didn't take that much yeah <clears throat> there it just doesn't even and you see a little bit of shine there off the white right just the top of the mace Okay. Now, wash. Where is the heavy seal on? <clears throat> Water. <clears throat> Touch a heavy sienna where our off white is. Mix it. We have ourselves like a just a brighter version of that color. I'm gonna take most of it off. You see, that's uh, it's almost the tan. It almost looks like the tan, right? <clears throat> Taking most of it off, and now we'll come to the fur. I'm just gonna glide it across the fur. And it's catching all of the all the higher indented spots take more off and it's just giving it a little bit of highlight you really don't need to push you need to really push anything at all it comes right off the brush and onto the boots And it's just not even, I mean, <clears throat> just to give it that extra character, a little extra highlight. Blend that right there. Yeah. Get a little more of that, take it right off. Let's just come right down one of these straps, maybe. And right down one of these. This one's a little more precise, but still, we're using not a lot of paint on the brush, and we're just kind of going up and down, up and down. And we are letting it come off on one of these wraps, and that's a little lighter. Okay, just like that. Okay. <clears throat> and with that, I'm gonna I'm gonna call this one done. I think we're done. 
So here's our final product for our Ogre Zombie. There's the front, the back, and that's that. I'm going to leave the base for now because I think that where I use this, it's going to be on a stone floor. But of course you can paint the base brown, even a darker gray, however you'd like. But this is our guy. So, Ogre Zombie Paint Night Kit. <clears throat> if you guys painted along with me, I hope that uh, <clears throat> I hope your model looks great. Please uh, <clears throat> feel free to share it with me. Let me know. Um, for those of you that that didn't uh, that didn't paint with me and just wanted to watch, well, thank you for watching. If this interests you, and um, you know it looks, hopefully I made it pretty easy looking. Um, <clears throat> you can certainly pick up <clears throat> the Ogre Zombie Paint Night Kit that's at JustGamesRochester.com. It's 25 bucks, and it gets you 12 paints from Vallejo, the two brushes, uh, the model. <clears throat> so that's a pretty big bang for your buck, um, I'd say. And I think that we had a good time today. So I'd like to thank Just Games for sponsoring this video or this, this stream. <clears throat> the VOD of this stream, for those of you that didn't catch it or want to go back to it, will be available on twitch.tv slash rooks table for 30 days but i will be moving the vod over to youtube as well on my youtube channel youtube.com slash rooks table where it will be there forever um <clears throat> so that's it thank you guys so much for watching if you are also on twitter feel free to follow me at rooks table once again thank you to just games rochester and i will catch you guys later thanks for tuning in guys